doesn't feel like we're leaving yet. Sometimes we're almost wishing we could stay, and other times we're really excited to leave and we think of our family and friends. So I guess we'll have to wait and see what tomorrow brings. So it'll be strange. There's so much to look forward to and so much to be afraid of. Traffic, we're going to be on Portage and Maine. Yeah. And, um... Like, at night here, the only man-made sound we hear is the odd plane that goes over at 30,000 feet, so... It's just the strangest thing, though, to think that this has been a whole year already. It's flown by so quick. There's an old saying on the prairies. If you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. It's sure to change, usually for the worse. So yesterday was the first day of spring? It was. You'd never believe it, eh? Now what? Well, I guess this is the March blizzard that we've been waiting for. Where are you headed today? I'm going to a funeral. What a day for a funeral. Wow. I really debated once I got out here that I should turn around and go back. But uh, this lady was a very dear lady. And uh, what would a settler do? Would they have braved this and gone to a funeral for somebody that was special to them or that was somebody that meant something to them? I bet they would. Deanna takes this storm in stride. The pioneers say the only cure for winter is patience. Like earlier settlers, they've learned to grumble about it and then go about their business. Because sooner or later, spring has to come. And then they can go. Winter is in full retreat, and with the melt, there's a feeling that the pioneer experience has come full circle. Well, we're gonna welcome spring in, change the sleigh to the wagon. Uh, we enjoyed the, the sleigh, it was so enjoyable, uh, quiet and smooth, but uh, all good things have to come to an end, I guess, and this is one of them. You know, it's springtime and we're soon going to be leaving here, and that's not a, a lot of pleasurable thought. Last fall, it took four men to move the wagon box to the sleigh. Today, Tim and Frank move it back alone. It's a moment of pride. They say they're just stronger and wiser in the pioneer ways now. I came down here a couple of, uh, oh, not even two hours ago, and there was only about, I came to check the road because I have to do pickup tomorrow. So I was trying to see how wet it is, and it's just horrible. But the ditch on this side of the road was, was, wasn't full of water, so I was going to make a couple of little paths because the road was starting to fill up, and hopefully the water would go off the road. But I've come back now here now two hours later, and the water's probably gone up six inches. And that whole ditch is just flooded now right to the field. So. There's nothing I can do now. I guess we're just gonna have to drive through it tomorrow. Of course, has, horses haven't gone through wet in a while, so it'll be a little bit of fun. Ooh. Overland flooding has become their next challenge. But the mud and water are easier to face this spring. Last June, they were greenhorns. Surviving a summer and a winter on the prairies, has given them all new confidence with the horses. They get their supplies and then head home to face another problem. Now, the thaw is threatening the food they've stowed away for spring. Well, we've been watching this fridge and our cellar under our floor here for the last couple of days because the water outside has been rising and rising and uh, well this morning we've got water. 
Well, our uh, thing I dug for kitty litter, let's fill right to the top. Oh, we'll dig her out here and we got our well. Perfect. Oh yeah, that's what we were gonna remember. We were gonna have our well in the house. Oh yeah. <laughs> you don't even have to dig. No, that's where our vegetables were sitting last night. But what, what, what would they have done, eh? Out here in this, I mean, oh man, I Can't probably they'd have gone back in, home and said, forget this Can't country. you see us in a sod house? <laughs> Can't you see us in a sod house? Now? Yeah, the water's really rising really quickly. Yeah. They discover that their outdoor freezer is flooding too. So how do you feel about this, Frank? I feel very good. I love cutting up deer meat in the morning. Is it a cool experience? Oh yes. They'll have to cook and can the deer meat before it thaws and goes bad. Oh, chickens are having a good time. So what are you gals doing today? Eat. Is this a pioneering experience? Yes, it is. Is this true pioneering? Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is true pioneering. This is summer memories. But you know, Alana and I were talking today about what, what would settlers do at this time of the year with this situation in this kind of the mid, it's not summer yet, um, but obviously we can't keep meat frozen outside. I guess they had to salt a lot of it, but I bet they had to do a lot of canning of it. And it probably was a big job. I mean, this was a little deer, and this is just a little bit of meat that was left. But, uh, but it works. At least we'll have meat till we leave. But their troubles aren't over. There's another sudden snowstorm, and then a deep frost. And they've just moved their vegetables from the flooded root cellar to the tent. Well, what should we do? Our water level in our house is up to the point where it's about two inches below the floorboards. Some of our our uh, vegetables are frozen. Had them in a box here all covered in, in tarp. A lot of times in the pioneer days they just simply had to eat kind of uh, spoiled vegetables and just work around it. Must have been very disappointing for settlers when they found their vegetables rotting or frozen, boy, it must have been devastating, especially with everything that frozen. Now the vegetables will be stowed under the bed, where someone else is waiting for their share. The storm has grounded the wagon. There's only one thing to do while they wait for spring to stop flirting. Find some joy in what they hope will be their last visit with winter. <laughs> Good shot. <laughs> There was no snow left out here until last night. It's a winter wonderland. This normally would be quite beautiful, but it's hard to appreciate it when Kavita said we can leave when the snow disappears and then this happens. This is the start of our lean-to. We're just gonna lean poles up. We've dug out the snow and it didn't take long and now we have a nice, hopefully waterproof place for the night. Frank and Alana are hunting for a cure for cabin fever. They try an overnight getaway, 1870s style. Last night we heard a coyote and it was probably about the closest we ever heard one. It sounded like it was howling really close behind our cabin. So that will bug me tonight if we hear the coyotes howling, especially because Frank already sent his gun home, so. <laughs> scary coyote from last night is back and it sounds like he's just behind our lean-to here. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> I swear I'm keeping this thing right by my head. Coyotes. Coyotes when you're in a cabin is beautiful. Coyotes out here, it's not quite so beautiful. Spring just doesn't want to come and winter just doesn't want to leave. Well, 
Well, it's April 16th. It's hard to believe. It looks more like December 16th. Some of the first signs of spring are the green leaves of poison ivy. Mm -hmm. Poison ivy everywhere. One horse turd, one good oak limb. Now if you want to try this type of golfing, it takes a lot of skill. The biggest skill is to find this, just the right size one. Then you've got to get your putting iron. Well, we call it a wood. Now, I realize in the 21st century, a wood is for driving far, but in the 1870s, a wood was for putting as well. It's April 24th, and at last, it looks like spring is here to stay. Some newspaper reporters and photographers have been invited to the homestead because in one week, the pioneers will leave their log homes and return to the 21st century. There were some parts that were a lot harder and some parts that were easier than we'd imagined. And what were those? Um, mosquitoes were way worse. Baking soda for toothpaste? It's really crappy. <laughs> Do you think that, that it, it's going to be a difficult adjustment when, when you leave here? I think it's going to be difficult because now we have to decide what we're going to do. I think what we wanted out of life has changed a little bit too. We don't want to get caught in the rat race again. Yeah. Maybe we will. We're hoping we don't. Um, we kind of want to change how we live a little bit. And it was neat to see their interest. They were, I felt they were genuinely interested in the experience that we had. But yeah, it really does signify the end because, you know, we talk about them. You're talking to them about what you did and what you accomplished, not what you're going to be doing. So it's sort of the end. So. Ready? Once the press leaves, it's time to get back to work, but not to farming. In a week, this field will become a cattle pasture again. The plow lay here all winter. It's carried away now to be returned to its owner. Wrangling this antique brings back all the memories of those first tough weeks on the land. I think maybe in a way I'd, I'd like to be plowing again this year. You know what, because we know how to do it. Yeah, and everything's set up right. Yeah, you know, it, we, we spent all year last year learning how to do it, and then we were done. Yeah. So it would have been nice to, uh, to plow this year. Of course, I could quite do without it. Uh, I'm not going to cry over it. No. No tears shed on my part. Slow down. That was hard labor. But when I read the journal that I wrote, oh man. Those first couple of weeks were unbelievable. I must have just had an adrenaline rush that, and, the, and the challenge that lay before me and just said, it's got to be done. This is, has to be done and we're going to do it. And it was the first thing we did, and we were both so inexperienced at everything. Yeah. And, and the just horses ignorant, were. just ignorant of it. We just didn't have any knowledge of how the thing was supposed to work. Yeah. So yeah. now we do, great. and I think I think we could go into a good plow contest. Maybe. <laughs> Well, we're just getting ready to go to town today, so we're uh, got all prettied up, shaved all up, got a new hairstyle just for the day. I kind of feel girl catcher.
last, last mail pickup. Pick this is exciting. It's a neat. Is it turning into a week of last? Yes. Yeah. 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 A week of last and a week of firsts. In what way? Well, we had first mosquitoes, first frogs, first butterfly, first, first caterpillar, first poison ivy, and mm. last, uh, well, our first goodbye. Well, we'll see you guys. We're, fu Bye. we're fine. Bye. There, here they come. So. Get them right up close. Yeah, right by that 10 a.m. Like right there. Yeah. Yeah. Right up by that white yeah. sign that says Argyle United Church. Wait. 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 Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because it's like something good to happen in Argyle, like something big in such a small town. And it makes Argyle yeah. stand out more than it usually does. Yeah. Uh -huh. You gonna miss them? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. What are you gonna miss the most? Uh, just having them around. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, Frank and Alana drop in at the Smith farm to say goodbye. Max had a lot of ideas too, and because he used to farm with horses, and, you know, we, we used his sleigh and even to grease in the wheels in the wagon or anything, that it was always good to talk to him. He's given us a lot of advice about our animals, and just, I mean, he's one of the older guys around here, so we kind of count on him as our information us. center, I yeah. guess. You can actually talk to an actual pioneer. In it all, and we will miss you all a lot. We will never forget you guys. Yeah, goodbye. See you, Matt. We'll see you. Yeah, Don't <laughs> let the world sort of implode on you too much. Yeah. And that's going to be hard. Oh, that's going to be very, really very hard. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay. What a pair. We, we really enjoyed them. Yes. And I'm sure they'll never forget this. Pretty tough stuff when they started. It was the worst year of oh, a hundred years. But they did it. It's their last full day on the land, packing day. Time to separate personal treasures from the trappings of a pioneer life. This afternoon, they'll move some of the farm tools to the neighbors for safekeeping. This is how it is when you leave a house, say, and you take all those things that make it home. All of a sudden, it's just a house again, you know? So maybe this will make it easier to leave here by emptying, emptying the house of our, our things that mean things, mean something to us, but... Yeah, it's, it's, it's sad. It's really sad. Yeah. Duct tape. I could have used this stuff all year, I tell you. What was that, Frank? I said I could have used duct tape all year. Would have held our wagon together. What does Willow think of all the packing? She's been rangy. I think she knows we're heading out. Yeah, she won't even go in the house. And actually, if we go near her and I'm not with a toy or something, she runs away, I think. <laughs> she's thinking she's gonna be locked up somewhere. She hasn't got any ticks yet, though. Nope. We had four or five of them on us yesterday. Wood ticks? Yeah, they've really come out and had one this morning, so they're How back. How about mosquitoes? I haven't, no, I had one bite yesterday, but they're back. We left the door open the other night so she could run in and out all night, and we had quite a few mosquitoes in, so. So we've come full circle? Yeah, it's a good time to be leaving. I wonder how the, the pioneers would have felt. They knew that they had to. They knew they had to go through the whole gamut again of of the bugs, the ticks, and, and everything. It must have been discouraging if you'd especially had two years of crop failure. We were talking to a person. 
and there was some place around here that every quarter section there was a, an, a, an abandoned yeah. farm yeah. within a few years of the start of the of the settlers. Today, the last of the supplies are being ferried to the next farm. Tomorrow, the pioneers will leave. But it won't be the defeat faced by many of those who came to the prairies in the 1870s and who left after being worn down by all the hardships these homesteaders have faced. There's just time now for one final meal. It's the last of Frank's deer, a stew made delicious by Deanna and then eaten outdoors, just as they did when they began here last June. Well, let's give thanks. Last time, hey? Mm -hmm. Yep. Giving thanks? Yeah. Out here. Well, Father, thank you for this year. It's been a good year. And I just thank you for this food and all the way that you've supplied all of our needs. In Jesus' name. Good. Definitely a little better than eating in that little. You know what? Yeah. It's way better can. Mm. We should have canned all of it. We should have. This is really good. That's fast food, eh? Mm. Oh yeah. I know what I'm going back to, and I'm not all that excited about it. <laughs> not. I came here with the elated feeling of I'm getting out of the rat race. I'm going back to a lifestyle that I've wanted to do. And so I was elated coming out here. But to go back into something that we know... Yeah. Um, We're just going back to normal life. We're not going back to something new and exciting. We came out here, there were so many things we didn't know that was going to happen, but we all know how to live in the 21st century. I think one of the things that I realized out here which was kind of neat was when we applied for this thing to start off with, it was such a dream and we never ever imagined we'd ever get it. I guess especially being younger, it's pretty exciting going home realizing, yeah, we can follow our dreams. I think because this seems so impossible, that now we'll be more daring and try for more dreams, even though normally we think maybe we shouldn't, that's a little too outrageous. So I think it's neat going home and knowing that we can pretty much do anything that we really want to. That you did it. Yeah. yeah. It's sad. Like, it's sad to be leaving this poison ivy mosquito infested wood tick haven that we call home. Especially with the new breed of ticks that just came out. They're yeah. nice ones. But, I mean, we've come to, this is home. I think that, you know, there's always the thing of couples going, can we get too much of each other type thing. Everyone said before we we're going to come out of here, before we came out here, that you guys are going to be divorced. Too much time together. But I think that's, for us, that's the thing we probably enjoy the most. It's just our time spent together, if it, talking or even just reading separately, like we or me reading her sewing or just time spent together. We just know each other a lot better, I think. I don't know if we really changed. We'll find out, I guess. I think our marriage is probably the best thing that I'm coming out of it, that it's stronger. Mm -hmm. it, it made me realize, I think, you know, that outside pressures affect marriages so much, whereas here the pressures have been very small. Mm -hmm. And what a wonderful year. We, we were just saying today, I think it's been the best year of our marriage. I'm sure when we make the fire in there. Summertime when we're on a canoe trip or something, it'll just be like a dream. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking like you remember. Him. And we woke up at six. Which wasn't bad. We thought it was five because it was so dark. But I walked down to Surrettes already. Oh, did you? Yeah. And I went out in the field, and I could not see one animal. 
It's the final morning. In a moment, they'll harness Duke and Diamond for the last time. There's plans for Daisy. She's going to a petting zoo while the horses are going back to their former owner. We've gotten very close to them. And when we first came here, a year ago, when we'd come out into the field, they'd go the other direction. And now, when we come out and give them a call, they come right to us. So we developed quite a relationship with them. I mean, I realize they're just animals and that, you know, two days after we leave, they'll forget about us, but we're not going to forget about them. And uh, they've become quite a part of our life. And he's, he's my favorite. <laughs> he always gets a little extra brush. Well, I went for a walk first thing this morning, which was nice because I, I got to settle my thoughts sort of scary. Uh, what's going to happen when we leave here, how we're going to feel. Um, excited to see my boys. That's probably the most predominant thought, or at least talk to them today. Scary because we have a news conference. <laughs> um, and all those people out there that uh, all of a sudden we're going to be with a lot of people. As much as I'm a people lover, all of a sudden it's a little bit uh, scary to... Uh, it's going to be so busy. I know my mind's just going to be racing. And here it hasn't raced. Push it in. and lots of memories here. It's like a lifetime. The best times are with people. That's the memories. And you old nags. Mm -hmm. For one last ride. Yeah, and it's gonna be one wet ride.
that? Or are you gonna have that? Guess we'll just dump it, eh? See ya, you've been good, real good. Give her a little last word. Good trooper, yeah. Daisy. Still got a bit of milk. the end in the rain. It's a lot easier to leave like this, knowing, remembering all those memories of rain and mosquitoes. It is easier. If it was a beautiful day, it might have been a bit more difficult, but sure bringing back memories as we travel down that road. What were you feeling when you went past that other colony? The first real, boy, it really hit me, it really hit me. Those people have meant so much to us, and they've been so kind to us. And in one year, we feel like we've got family there. Yeah, and you're going to say goodbye to your children? Wow, getting in a car. <laughs> you go first, I'm not getting in there yet. <laughs> Muddy old boots. Did <laughs> 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 have a video in it? Free brand for the day. <laughs> Is it today? <laughs> Microwave. <laughs> Are we in it? <laughs> Bye. 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 He's proud of us. He wants to congratulate Hello, you. Hello, son. <laughs> well, I made it. Oh, it's neat. It's just neat being in this limo here. It's huge. It must be, oh man, 20. Bigger than our cabin, eh? <laughs> it's bigger than our cabin. <laughs> I think I'm going to make a business with that leaf treatments after. Get a good trip? Yeah, sort of like, you know, those little, little Chinese wraps. Yeah, we're, we're heading to Tim Hortons now. <laughs> yeah, we're in the limousine. We're going to Tim Hortons. Oh, this is a wonderful talking Oh, Elena wants a coffee. It's weird. It's kind of ugly. It's just like, sm like I don't Oh, know, Elena's going to spa smoky tomorrow. Smoky and stinky and yeah, first thing in the morning. car exhaust. And then I'm going to go to the gym. It's weird. There's so much and concrete. I think we're going to go shopping in the evening. I miss our old view, and, that's for sure. Uh, we got a party at Michael's house tomorrow night. There's Wendy's. Hey, Martin. Oh, here we are. You go, I'm scared. <laughs> well, Deanne, I don't, I don't see porridge. <laughs> Large tea. Have a large tea? Yeah. Just regular tea? A muffin? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone want a free muffin? A free muffin. Oh, that's a G-Pod? <laughs> Can I get your guys' autographs? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Frank's department. <laughs> Come over to Wendy's. Come on over. Come on over. I guess this is a first. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, no, I'm not right back. Next is the press. I'm finding myself getting quieter. And I just, I'm kind of withdrawing. And I wouldn't be surprised to see myself at the press just kind of 
slide down a little bit and let the other three do some talking, major talking. Bring me the deodorant. <laughs> yes, <laughs> me too. Ah, deodorant. <laughs> to be tried out right now. <laughs> I'm just checking this out, making yeah. sure it works. <laughs> Good enough. So they, you know what? They change the colors in a year. Thank you very much. You did a wonderful job. Wonderful. Thank you. My husband always liked that idea, but not me. So, <laughs> hey, not me either. <laughs> you get points. You get points. Actually, yeah, you get points for anything you buy. We're right back into it. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh. Isn't her toothbrush. <laughs> Isn't her toothbrushes. <laughs> everyone, everyone have deodorant on? Yes. 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 Just go head for the side, head for the side. I feel back to reality. Wet. How does it feel for you? Familiar, the rain. How's the dry? Great. I think you should have met us out in the rain One minute we felt like laughing and we we're like yippee we got toothpaste and baths and then and then we were ready to cry just you know we looked at our cabin window and it's empty and it's strange um, ups and downs a lot of them I think we're excited to see our families and we're sad to go back to a rushed life but I think too we put so much work into everything the houses and just uh, sort of well, put a lot of work into the land it didn't show what we did and I think it was just hard to walk away from that when you take on the role or take on a lifestyle and that became our lifestyle pioneering we were pioneers and all four of us adapted that lifestyle that we were pioneers I know they, they stress the in parts of the show they stress the the four of us not getting along with each other I think we did really well and I, I don't know how it was portrayed in the movie because I've never seen it but I think the four of us worked together really well and through everything we had to put up with I don't think four people could have got along any better than we did. Did we stay in touch now, do you think? I think definitely. The thing is that nobody out there has experienced what we have experienced and can relate to what we have. And I think that's something that we'll have uh, as a bond together for mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. Do you mind if I say a few words? Our biggest fans have been our three sons and we want to publicly thank them for sacrificing their parents for a year. Without their support, we could have never done this. Our youngest son, David, always wrote on his letters, stick it, Mom. Well, today, David, I stuck it. <laughs> You have to try this. Wee -hee. Oh. It gives and everything. Wow. Oh, ever I don't have to nice. jiggle. Ever I don't have to nice. jiggle to make the straw settle down. I just want to sleep with all my worldly possessions around me. <laughs> <laughs> Time to run the bath. 
to you guys. <laughs> Coming out a different woman. Oh well, back in the real world. This is wonderful. I'm like speechless in here. Almost as good as the old slew. <laughs> What do you think of our new best friend? Pretty fancy, eh? For a couple lowly nothings. Couple of lazy pioneers. Well, it's our first night in our hotel. First night in civilization. Yeah. I don't even know where to start. It's been a crazy day today. So anyway, this is wonderful right now, but I think it'll wear off pretty quick and yeah. we're gonna It's run not as exciting as we thought it was gonna be. It was the chance of a lifetime. I mean, I'll never regret it and never... I mean, I think we're just so lucky that we had the chance to do it. We'll never be able to, you know, recreate it or... There's no place you can go to, to do it again, so it's amazing to be able to have done it. The wood, shingles, snails, they're just things, but the, the people who, who we connect it all with, that's the, that's the key. I have come to admire pioneers, and they're my heroes. Never thought, you know, never thought about them much before, but they are my heroes. I have to get out of here. I don't care. I can't even figure out how to get out of the underground parking. This is confusing though. Nothing with being, you know. Yeah, at least everyone thinks it's a grandpa driving this car. Exactly. Oh, does this feel funny? Oh, man. Thank you. Watch her. Yeah, watch her. No reason. Well, you're not cut it. I, I kind of convinced him. Actually, you know what? She just covered up all the mud. She just painted over it. <laughs> I said, I think I showered for two minutes. The other 16 were shaving. Did it smell nice? Chase, wasn't it? <laughs> this is what we should have had halfway through the movie, you know? Okay. Oh, Frank will like it. Yeah. I know Frank will. If I had a big poofy dude, he would like it. What do you think? The new pioneers. Start a new homestead, eh? It's, we seem so far away from that now. Yeah. We're sitting here and think that's just something we kind of had a weird dream about one night. It's strange. That's a great movie star. Hey, we're gone. Back to Kenora.
for bringing the chickens home. Ah, awesome. <laughs>